Joining us from Geneva, Switzerland, is Ahmed Shuja Jamal, a former Afghan official, the co-author of the forthcoming book, The Decline and Fall of Republican Afghanistan. Ahmed, thanks so much indeed for your time. Uh, before we get into an analysis of how the Taliban can help its own people, could you just tell us what you've heard from your friends, your contacts and your family in Afghanistan? Uh, thank you, Adnan. I think as you've heard from my friend Ahmed reporting from the scene that this is an unfolding situation with rains that have started over the last few days and survivors and others are being pulled out of the rubble as we speak. The full scale of the damage is still unclear, but from what we do know from our friends and contacts and others, that it is clear that the damage has been fairly extensive and the need for, the, for relief is urgent as aftershocks continue to cause damage. And I think uh, the more aid pours in and the more administrative and logistical capacity is built over the next few days, uh, the better it is because we are moving from a search and rescue into an unfolding a situation where people are going to be needing shelter in the medium and long term but also uh, the necessities to combat the potential spread of cholera among the people who have survived. Yeah, absolutely. What's your understanding of how international sanctions may be affecting the Taliban's ability to help the people who need that assistance in eastern Afghanistan? I thought it was quite interesting that these two Indian planes that have landed at Kabul with their 27 tons of assistance, all that material is going to be given to a UN office. The Indians themselves are not going to administer it. And I'm wondering if that's because of sanctions. UN agencies, they've been given some leeway to work, but otherwise, when sanctions are imposed by the US, any country that breaks those sanctions can then get punished itself. Well, Adnan, I'm really glad you asked that question because the sanctions are often sorely misunderstood in this context. The sanctions from the UN Security Council, but also from the US Treasury Department are actually in uh, technically levied against Taliban individuals who are known to have ties with Al Qaeda or having engaged in terrorist activities. And so when those individuals are put in charge of organs of the Afghan government, like the Ministry of Interior, with an FBI most wanted Haqqani leader at charge, and other Afghans, uh, other Taliban members who are in charge of the central bank, then those sanctions that are uh, uh, levied on these individuals then by default also get levied on the institutions that they lead. So if half of the issue is really the existence of these sanctions, the other half is for the Taliban, on the Taliban, for elevating people under those sanctions, who then bring the sanctions on those institutions. Having said that, both the UN Security Council and the US Treasury Department have actually eased their sanctions significantly to enable the delivery of humanitarian assistance. And these e easing of the sanction has been there for the seven, past seven or eight months. And so when the Taliban are using the sanctions language to argue for unfreezing of the Afghan funds, those funds in the US federal bank reserves are not for humanitarian assistance. Those funds should not be used for that purpose because they underpin the value of the Afghani currency. And the moment you begin to drain that those funds, Afghanistan's currency is going to lose value drastically, inflation is going to go up, and people who have not been affected by earthquake will have their purchasing uh, uh, power going down. So the, the, the Indian material that has arrived, in fact, logistically, it should be distributed through the, the UN aid agencies because the UN aid agencies are the only ones in the ground that have the reach, the administrative capacity, but also the transparency to avoid uh, parochial distribution of aid to Taliban friends and families, to, to are, and therefore they're best able to distribute that aid. Now, the Afghan National Disaster Management Authority, which is domestically at, in, in, in the lead for these, uh, uh, for these uh, emergencies, had developed significant capacity over the past two decades to reach and address disasters and war-related emergencies. But it has been hollowed out after the Taliban came to power. But it is able to operate only at the margins of the capacity that it used to have. Um, and so I think it's important to talk about the Taliban's administrative capacity and the hollowing out of the capacity that had been built in the past. Um, and so, again, the Taliban appear to be weaponizing the issue of sanctions, which are much misunderstood and often blamed for their own own maladministration and competence and the gutting of the modest budding administrative capacity in Afghanistan. Ahmed, thank you so much indeed. Ahmed Shuja Jamal speaking to us from Geneva in Switzerland.